All right, welcome back everybody. Ryan here, uh, starting part two of this series of uh, doing this transmission job in uh, my T660 Kenworth, 10-speed uh, manual uh, we're pulling out here. So uh, first video, we got it all prepped, uh, pulled the drive shafts out, air lines, grease lines, coolant lines, so the transmission cooler and all that type of stuff, and just got it all prepped basically down to the bell housing bolts is the only thing we got left. Um, one, of the, one issue I wanted to talk to you guys about or to show you guys, make you aware of if you're not familiar with this stuff, um, I know especially I've seen a lot of Macs that have, they'll have uh, basically transmission mounts on the transmission back there and they'll have one engine mount like in the center of the engine and you got to be really careful with those um, because once you take that, you pull that transmission out, this engine could fall backwards. Um, so it can cause a lot of problems. So you just got to really, you got to take, before you start this job, which I should have talked about in the first video, um, you got to take note where your engine mounts and transmission mounts and all that are. So this particular engine, this T660 Kenworth, Cummins ISX15, it actually has an engine mount up here in the very front underneath the harmonic balancer, the main pulley there. And then it has two mounts right back here. It's not, it's right just ahead of the bell housing. And then the transmission just hangs there. It doesn't have any mounts or anything. So it, it all your mounting for the engine and transmission are actually on the engine. So this one you don't have to worry about. Um, but on some, like I said, I've seen it on Max a lot. I've, I worked for a trucking company, uh, aggregate company, concrete company that we had a lot of Mac trucks. Um, and they were like that to where this engine would pivot, you know, if you took that transmission loose from its mounts back there. So you gotta be careful with that because that could be dangerous. And um, also it can make it really hard to get that transmission in or out because um, you gotta kinda, you have to put a jack underneath the, the engine to kind of move it and position it to get everything lined up so it can be a little tricky. So uh, just, just watch out for that. Like I said, if you are, this is the first time you're doing one of these jobs, if you're a new mechanic or an owner operator or whatever and trying to do your own job. Um, I know they, they charge quite a bit to do this. So I mean, if you can do it yourself, you can save several thousand dollars, um, you know, maybe in the ballpark of four to 5,000 um, by doing it yourself. And it's not really, I mean, especially on the Kenworths, these are pretty, these are really easy to get to everything. So it's, uh, they're, not, they're not that big of a deal. It's just having a good place to do it, which, I don't have my shop. We just bought a piece of property for a shop and building a truck stop and all that for our business. So fortunately, I'm doing it outside, which we've had like the wettest summer we've ever had here in Northeast Ohio for some reason this year. So um, I, I actually put steel plates down underneath the truck, which you saw in the first video, to run my jacks and equipment underneath there and have a smooth surface. It's actually probably just as good or better than concrete as far as the the smoothness of it. So for running running jacks and all that over it, I think it it'd be, should work out pretty well. Um, but, but on top of that, we've had so much rain, it just keeps, I've had like a pond underneath here set sometimes, so it's made it really tricky to, to kind of, you know, that first video was actually, it might be 20 or 30 minutes for you guys, but it was actually over like a week and a half time span. So with the kind of trying to catch it in between the rains and when everything dried up and all that. But uh, anyways, I'm going to get over here and I'm going to show you guys what we're going to do real quick. And then um, we're going to get to it. Okay, so the first thing I got to do down here, I'm going to take out these bottom bell housing bolts about halfway, half of the circle around. Um, they're 5 eighths, so I'm going to use impact here, half inch impact with a uh, power socket there, universal socket, uh, to pull those out. Um, and once I got the bottom ones out, then I'm going to bring the jack underneath here and set it up, and I can get up. That's why one of the reasons I took this yoke off back here in the first video. It took this yoke off because it stuck out another, you know, four or five inches here to give me, that gives me enough clearance to actually get up here to the top and pull out all the top bolts. So it should be relatively, there's a lot of room on these, so more than most. Um, so if you're a thinner guy like I am, you shouldn't really have any issues getting around up in here. So, um, yeah, so that's pretty much it right here. So I'm going to get the air compressor started up and uh, I'm going to start pulling these guys out. And uh, like I said, get the jack underneath here and get this thing pulled out of here, finally. Alright, so go and get these guys took out of here.
All right, so I got the jack set up. I got a strap around it to keep it on there to hold the transmission in place. Uh, everything looks pretty okay, I guess, uh, but you never know until you get started here. Um, I got four bolts left on the top on the bell housing, then that should be it. Then uh, hopefully it should just come right out. Um, I got my wife helping me today, so she can, she's probably going to go up to the front and shoot from the back. It'll probably be the safest place for her because uh, I'm going to need all the room I got in here because it's going to be. I said it, it's. I've done these by myself before, but it, it's a little, it's a lot easier if you have two people. So it is a little bit of a challenge, and and. Um, it's nice to have somebody standing by to dial 911 if need be. So, uh, all right. Well, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll take. I got the air compressor started out there. We'll rip these uh, top four uh, bolts out, and then uh, we'll see what happens. All right. Last one. out of here. See up there. I don't want to put. Huh? Yeah. it out? Mm -hmm. All the way out? I think so. <sighs> Okay. Okay, so uh, had a little bit of struggles there getting it uh, broke loose. So I actually just jacked it up real high to where it like, started lifting up the truck and it popped the bottom loose and, and broke that, that bond between the uh, bell housing and the, the bell housing of the transmission to the uh, flywheel cover casing up there, bell housing on the engine side. Uh, so I got it down safely. That's the most, that's probably the most dangerous part right there. So that the worst part is over, thankfully. Um, as you can see, my logic in doing these projects is to try to take as little loose as possible. Cause it seems like the more you take loose, the more stuff you break, got to buy gaskets for. But as you can see, uh, I'm going to have to come out with this exhaust pipe. It's just, it's not going to fit through here. So I was hoping I was I was hoping I could get away because I'm probably gonna break these clamps and these bolts look pretty nasty. So it's just just uh you know it's just like a ball of yarn type of situation. You you get in taking more stuff apart, more stuff you break, more gaskets, seals, clamps, and all that stuff. So I'm gonna take this off real quick. Then uh, I think the tanks over here are gonna be okay. I mean, kind of looking at the clearance, 
Um, so once we take take this tailpipe exhaust pipe off here, I think we'll be able to come right out of here with it. So it's like so we got it up here, and I'm I'm down as low as I can go. For some reason, I was thinking this was going to go down a little bit lower, and I was going to be able to crawl through here with it, but that's just not the case. So uh, I'm going to rip this off real quick, and then um, we'll drag this guy out of here. All right, so I got that exhaust out there, out of the way, and as you can see, it progressed forward, and it looks like we're going to be okay. I think when um, when I go back in with a new one, I'll probably put the bell housing on the transmission once I get it inside here. I mean, I, I mean, it's just a little bit tighter, um, but it will it would go through if I wanted. But uh, just to make it a little bit easier, you know, doing this by yourself. So my wife has uh, since the the dangerous part's over and the transmission's on the ground. Uh, my wife left me, so I'm back on my own here. So uh, won't be as good as uh, photography or uh, cinematography, whatever you want to call it. So, um, so I got it, like I said, back here already. We got enough room to uh, get it out. And we're going to pull the rest of the way out. Then um, probably grab the tractor and a couple of lugs and uh, get this thing out of here. And um, then we'll get the clutch caddy, take that clutch out. And I'll show you what the clutch caddy is uh, if you're if you got a shop or you, uh, you got a couple trucks or something and you do this stuff yourself uh, the clutch caddy is probably one of the most uh, one of the best investments you can make uh, I got I got mine with all the attachments for DPF starters drive shafts uh, the flywheel and, and the clutch itself so they're really useful tools so and, uh, and you'll see it here in a second once I take this use it take this clutch out and put the new clutch in and maybe take the well obviously I'll take the flywheel off too because we're gonna put a rear main seal in this also um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and pull this guy out of the rest of the way here and uh, we'll get it out of here. All right, we are out. Finally. All right, after a little bit of a struggle there with the uh, my chain bracket, uh, tire chain bracket there, or holder. Oh, I got sweat running in my eye. Yeah. Uh, transmission's out here. Uh, no injuries or anything, thankfully. You can see this guy's pretty, pretty rough looking, pretty rusted, and all that nasty stuff. But. Uh, so anyways, it's out. I didn't have to take the bell housing off. Uh, with that exhaust, I did end up breaking two clamps, I think. So it's just, uh, like I said, that's why I tried to, to avoid taking stuff loose unless it's absolutely necessary. Because it seems like once you touch something, it just, you break it and more money and more time, more trips to Kenworth and all that stuff. So, um, but anyways, why I'm all dirty here, uh, I don't want to jump in that new tractor and get it all greasy and dirty. Um, but why I'm still dirty, I'm going to go get the clutch caddy in here and then uh, we're going to take that old clutch out real quick and see what the flywheel looks like and uh, that'll probably be about all the time we got an event to go to today so that probably be all I have time for today but uh, well it'll be the same day for you guys watching this but anyways <laughs> so uh, I'll go ahead and get that guy set up and uh, I'll show you, I'll tell you, show you all about the, uh, the uh, clutch caddy. Alright so here is the uh, clutch caddy so it's got basically like an input shaft here like your transmission does. And this a double as our uh, alignment shaft for putting in the uh, clutch and pressure plate and all that once I go back in. But we're gonna use this, this instead of just going underneath there with the impact and taking the bolts out and letting it drop on the ground, I'm gonna only use this to remove it, the old clutch and whole clutch assembly as well. Uh, so I'll get this thing in there and then I'll show you how it works. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is uh, jack this guy up. Sorry, everything's gonna kind of vibrate here for a minute.
All right, back here, guys. I got uh, I got to come over. Wanted to buy some hay, so I got a little interrupted there for a second. Uh, so sorry for the lapse there. Uh, so, okay, so I got the uh, clutch caddy in and and uh, got it fully engaged with the splines into the clutch disc and all that. And um, gonna put a little weight on her, a little pressure. And now what I'm gonna do is uh, pull these uh, bolts out of the pressure plate and uh, let the clutch caddy here support everything. Must have lost the washer on that guy. Let's walk this guy back. Now what I'm going to do is roll this over. Bring him on down. And the installation, once we put it back in, we'll set it all up in here just like this. Stand him up and put him right back in. And that's how you put a clutch in by yourself without killing yourself or killing your back. Uh, like I said, this is a really useful tool. So um, I used one one time and I knew as soon as I started this business, uh, my new maintenance business, I was like, that's, I gotta have one of these. I mean, if you're gonna be doing this stuff by yourself, you gotta have it. Uh, it makes it a lot easier and a lot safer. That's definitely. So the flywheel doesn't look too bad. Uh, we'll probably roll with it, uh, take it out and clean it up. And I'll put that new uh, rear mainsail in to be our next project here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy out of here and um, get start getting set up uh, to get the, uh, to change my attachments here on the clutch caddy because I got an attachment for this also for the flywheel. Um, and I also have an attachment to do rear end differentials too. So. <laughs> Uh, it's really, it's a really nice, useful tool, and I'm not, I'm not trying to sell it or anything. I'm just telling you, if you, uh, if you're an independent, you're working by yourself or something, you got a small shop. I mean, this is one. Of the, I mean, for like two grand for this and all the attachment things that I paid, um, you just, you can't go wrong. It's, it's really, really a useful tool. So, all right, I'll shut up about how great the clutch caddy is and um, get this guy out of here. And I don't know if you guys saw any of that. So. So, sorry about that. The whole time I was talking, I didn't realize that the camera was uh, not where I wanted it. <laughs> so, that's what happens when you're doing this by yourself. All right, so back underneath the truck again. Uh, so, a little bit, we're slowly getting to the end of this part two here on the uh, transmission pullout and complete disassembly. Uh, so, last thing I have left here, I'm going to take the flywheel out because uh, we want to put a new rear main seal on the engine. So, I already got that. So, I mean, you're already in this deep. 
Uh, the main seal is like, I think it's like 80, 80 or hundred dollars or something. So and it only takes, <clears throat> excuse me, um, maybe an extra 15 or 20 minutes to pull this fly wheel off, pull the old seal out and then put a new one in. Um, and that will, once we get that seal out, that's gonna conclude this, this part two, uh, the disassembly. And then we'll start up with our part three on the reassembly and we'll start with that main seal and build our way on back till we get, uh, you know, basically to where we're putting in the drive shaft. And then that'll kind of be the buttoning up stage and finishing up and all that. So um, I got an attachment for my clutch caddy for this flywheel because uh, they are pretty heavy, uh, kind of awkward to get up in there by yourself as well. Even, even with somebody else, they're very awkward to get up in there and get lined up and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the bolts out real quick here. And then um, we'll get the clutch caddy hooked up, pull this guy out. And then once I got it out, I'll also pull this uh, pilot bearing out too, because we got a new pilot bearing as well. So then we'll pull that seal out behind the flywheel. So now with that, I'll go ahead and get set up here and uh, get started. And this is a 12.21 uh, millimeter socket down here. So these are kind of an odd socket, but like I said, a 12.21 works. Uh, so we'll go ahead and pull these guys out of here. I'm gonna leave that just kind of in there just for safety's sake. Usually they're kind of stuck in there so they won't fall out anyways, but you never know. Grab the uh, clutch caddy and get that guy set up in here. All right, so I got my clutch caddy with my flywheel plate. So we're gonna raise this guy up here. Okay. And we'll just pull it out. Now, just like we did with the clutch, we can lay this guy down backwards. Alrighty. And we'll get this out of the way and we'll pull that uh, main seal out of there. Now, 
Now the other thing we have here is that uh, pilot bearing. It's in the flywheel right here. So I'm just going to knock that out towards the front here real quick. Hopefully I have a big enough socket underneath here. Which I probably don't. <laughs> Pilot bearing is out as well right there. So then we'll put the uh, new one in once I get it up, uh, flywheel back on in there. So now I'm gonna go and pull that main slot, which it looks like this thing has been seeping a little bit. Which once I get this out of the way, I'll show you here. A little bit more room. Okay. As you can see, there's a little, it's a little wet down here. Not terrible, but it is starting to leak a little bit and that can become a major, if that seal goes out, you see what, what we've all done, what we've done so far, what you have to go through to re, just to replace the seal. Um, you have to take transmission, clutch, every fight, everything out, everything behind, everything behind this bearing has to come out. Um, so it's gonna be a pretty major project for, like I said, uh, a less than $100 seal in the back of your engine here. Um, so like I said, if you're doing one of these jobs uh, or, or you're getting, you're paying for one at a shop somewhere, I would highly recommend if you're doing a clutch or transmission, replace this rear main seal. Like I said, you're already in this far. So you'd hate to have to pay all that labor to have everything taken back out again just for that seal. So uh, I'm gonna pull that out real quick here. And that will, and we'll kind of wrap up. So. All right, so uh, we're back underneath the truck here. Um, I went through, I took my uh, shop vac and slept all that brake dust out of here because I didn't want to blow that around because that stuff can be kind of hazardous to you. So I sucked all that out. Like I said with the shop back, and then um, I took some brake cleaner, cleaned up around the ceiling surface. Now, like I was talking about out there outside, uh, this is aluminum where this seal, where this rubber goes. So, I mean, if you nick this or something, if you were trying to pull this out with a seal, you know, like a regular, you know, the hook type uh, seal puller or something, and you and you to damage this, I mean, you could have a major problem. And, and same thing up here on the crankshaft as well. So, uh, so like I said, I would just, I would recommend, and I know it's 200 bucks, it's 200 bucks. I hate to spend that, you know, for something you might not use a whole lot, uh, but it, it could save you from having to pull this, you know, taking this bell housing off, off the back of the engine or something. So first thing, uh, what we're gonna do, <clears throat> we've got three studs here, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put those into the uh, crankshaft in a triangle pattern. So get the take the nuts off of these.
Okay, so uh, back underneath the truck here. Uh, I left our uh, studs in for the uh, removal. Um, these are actually more for the installation, um, but I used it to keep everything straight when I was doing the, uh, the removal of the old uh, remain seal. Um, so I left those in. Um, I've got the new remain seal here. And uh, what we're gonna do with it on this seal, this black part, uh, we're gonna, we got a soap uh, mixture here. And this is uh, one part uh, soap to 10 parts water. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna kind of apply it, use it for a lubricant on the edge of the seal. So I'm gonna do that real quick here and then we'll get the, uh, get the uh, installation tool set up on there, so. And um, I, I didn't, I didn't forgot to mention, but I did clean all this up before uh, we started this process. So we got that guy on there. And I'm not sure if this ring, I'm not sure if that'll all fit at this time. Open it well. Yeah, we're good. So they give you that little, I'll take that back off. So this little installation ring, this comes with the new seal and a kit. And this tool that I have, it's beveled. It's actually made for that, that ring because that tells you basically when to stop and all that good stuff. Okay. So that all looks good to me. All right, so like I said, that all looks good around there. So we're gonna go ahead and take a three eighths and take these studs out because we're done with this. All right, guys, so there is the uh, old rear main seal. Um, so yeah, I could see this being a real problem. Like I said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't attempt to, um, I've done other, other other engine models uh, without using having to use a special tool like this, where you could use a seal puller. Um, there's some I believe on the uh, the Detroit's. They have like a flange that you can actually get up behind them and pull them out. But uh, this particular seal, um, I, I just see a lot of trouble uh, coming from from trying to uh, do it without that tool that I just used. So and um, putting the new one back in would be a lot easier. I mean, it could be done without a tool. Um, but it, it'd be a lot easier with this tool. So um, that's going to conclude finally this uh, whole uh, disassembly, uh, the part two of this uh, transmission clutch job rear main seal. So, um, like I said, I'm uh, this this rear main seal video, the removal and installation. Uh, we're probably going to 
put put that footage out non fast forward or non edited. So I mean, if somebody's looking to do that job, you can see the whole thing because um, it, it it's about a 30 minute job. So I didn't want to add 30 minutes to this video. It's already kind of long. Um, so uh, so to probably be fast, I don't know. My wife would probably fast forward it. But if you're interested in that, we're gonna we'll have a separate video with that footage with commentary and all that. Um, taking this remain seal out and putting the new one in if you're interested as well. So anyways, that's going to conclude this part two. Uh, so we, we took everything. Part two, we had, uh, we started with the bare transmission, took the transmission out, took the clutch out, and uh, took the rear main seal out. So now I'm going to clean everything up. And uh, part three of this uh, whole transmission clutch job uh, will be putting the remain seal in, clutch in, transmission in and then uh, part four finally will be uh, kind of the buttoning it up putting uh, hooking up wires uh, drive lines and uh, drive shafts and all that stuff so uh, I think I already said drive lines but uh, exhaust I'm looking at the exhaust here and I'm thinking drive lines for some reason uh, so then that's so that'll be the last part so uh, so stay tuned for part three and like I said if you're interested in a more detailed video of that uh, rear main seal job uh, removal and installation you can we'll have that out for you guys as well so uh, I, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell for the updates. Uh, like the video, thumbs up thing, because uh, you know that helps us get those videos out to, or for, helps us get YouTube out to, to push those videos to the people that might uh, be interested in them. Uh, so uh, yeah, we appreciate all the support, everybody. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, if you're interested in our farming stuff, I always put it out there. Uh, tractors, animals, chickens, crops, baling hay and all that stuff. If you're interested in that type of stuff, uh, we always put the link to our uh, farm channel as well. So uh, check that out if you're interested. Uh, so again, thanks for everything. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.